Experts in the global export business have said that the success of Nigeria's local export business in the 21st century will be determined by digital marketing operations. On the breakfast this morning, we'll also talk sports, analyzing the situation in the Chelsea Football Club and also the Super Falcons and their journey in the United States of America. And we have a look and analysis of the biggest stories on the front pages of today's national dailies. All this ahead on the breakfast this morning. Very good morning to you. We're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Friday morning. We're reaching you live from our studios on Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels, writing so this morning. And of course, uh, we start with a top trending segment where Queen Elizabeth II has passed on at the age of 96 with the Charles becoming king. Of course, uh, uh, very unexpected news. And uh, of, of course, the Queen, just about three days ago, was with the uh, then incoming British Prime Minister Liz Truss. Um, she was on her feet. The picture, official picture released by the royal family um, showed her on her feet with a walking stick. And many did not expect that Queen Elizabeth II, as you're seeing on your screens, will be uh, no more in just two days' time. She is the UK's longest serving monarch and she died at Balmoral, aged 96, after reigning for 70 years. Um, she, according to royal palace uh, or royal family sources, died peacefully uh, on Thursday afternoon at her Scottish estate, where she had spent much of the summer. The Queen came to the throne in 1952 and witnessed enormous social change. Of course, her son, uh, Prince Charles, now becomes King Charles III. And he said the death of his beloved mother was a moment of, moment of great sadness, those were his words, for him and his family, and that her loss would be deeply felt around the world. Indeed, this is a moment of great sadness, That's not just for the um, royal family and, and you know, her close family, but indeed the British people and the world at large. We'll take a short, short, short um, documentary, and uh, we put something together just to... Um, you know, remember the life and times of Queen Elizabeth II. 1848, and who now succeeds her. To the death of Queen Elizabeth II has been announced, bringing to an end the longest reign of any British monarch. Born on April 21st, 1926, the princess had never expected to ascend to the throne. But after her uncle, King Edward VIII, abdicated in 1936, the crown passed to her father, George VI. My whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. Tragic news. She was just 25 when she became Queen Elizabeth II in 1952 on the death of her father. And following by the heavily veiled grieving figures. She was crowned the next year at Westminster Abbey. Winston Churchill was the first of her 15 prime ministers, and during her 70-year reign, there were 14 US presidents. The young Queen Elizabeth spent much of the early years saying farewell to the British Empire amassed by her forebears from Kenya to Hong Kong to Barbados. However, she remained the monarch of 15 countries and head of the Commonwealth. Her own personal union to Prince Philip stayed solid for 74 years until his death in April 2021. The couple had four children, beginning with Charles, who was born in 1948, and who now succeeds her to the throne. The Queen's life became one of public duty, attending thousands of official engagements across the globe. She was loved and respected by many. Millions turned out to celebrate her 70th year on the throne in June 2022. The Queen herself had to step back from some of the partying due to recurring health problems. Commentators agreed that she came across as a dignified, down-to-earth and witty woman. Critics said she was too solemn and distant, a woman recognized by millions but known by hardly anyone. Away from her public duties, 
horse racing and her beloved corgis were lifelong passions. As was the outdoors, like her estate at Balmoral in Scotland, where she was more at home in tweeds than tiaras. Her reign was rarely plain sailing. The 40th anniversary of her accession was a year that she famously described as one of disaster and misfortune. It has turned out to be an annus horribilis. Three of her four children's marriages had failed, and there was a major fire at her Windsor Castle Royal residence. The death of Charles's ex-wife, Princess Diana, in 1997, was even more harmful to the family's public prestige. As your queen and as a grandmother, I say from my heart, first I want to pay tribute to Diana myself. She was an exceptional and gifted human being. In years later, some of the damage was repaired by events like the marriage of her grandson, William, to commoner Kate Middleton in 2011, watched by billions around the world. But with Queen Elizabeth's death, the monarchy's future is likely to face scrutiny like never before. Polls suggest Charles will be a far less popular British monarch. And there are other challenges. Prince Harry and his American wife, Meghan, giving up their royal duties amid accusations of racism has robbed the institution of two of its most popular global figures. And the US sex abuse lawsuit against Prince Andrew, which he paid to settle while admitting no wrongdoing, also left its mark. The death of Britain's Queen Elizabeth finally hands on the duties and heavy responsibility of the monarchy, a task to which she devoted her own life to maintain its popularity in the face of seismic political, social and cultural change. Right, uh, of course, a life in times of Queen Elizabeth II who passed on at the age of 96 and of course um, her family released a statement, the royal family released a statement. Also, um, now King Charles released a statement uh, saying that we mourn profoundly the passing of a cherished, cherished sovereign and, and a much-loved mother. Uh, I know her loss will be deeply felt throughout the country, the realms of the Commonwealth and countless people around the world, and this will be the case. Um, you know, uh, I mean, of course, some, some people have also said that uh, Queen Elizabeth lived a long life, very long life indeed, and uh, uh, this is just a celebration of life, uh, her passing. Uh, of course, um, you have the processes that will be, um, will be adhered to and will be followed by the royal family, the British public, and um, these have been announced. Um, I'm sure they've been preparing for this day for quite some years. So they'll just put this, these into, into motion. Um, so now Prince Charles becomes King Charles um, III. And uh, his wife, Camilla uh, Parker Bowles, now becomes the Queen Consort. And they will return to London on Friday uh, to Buckingham Palace. Uh, this is what they, it was to have been told, and he, as the new king, is expected to address the entire nation, the British nation, today, uh, Friday. I'm sure they've been getting ready for this moment for quite some time, but still, uh, the pain and the hurt will be there. They've become used, even more used, to the presence of a queen, the queen, their mother, uh, even as the entire world has become used to the presence of the queen constantly being there. All right. Now, senior royals we told had gathered at Balmoral, where the Queen passed on, after the Queen's doctors became concerned about her, her health, her health rather, earlier in the day. Now, all the Queen's children travelled to Balmoral near Aberdeen, that's in Scotland, after doctors placed the Queen under medical supervision. Her grandson, and now heir to the throne, Prince William, and his brother Prince Harry, uh, had also gathered there. It's good to see that he is back um, in. The, U the UK on royal duties. Now, how about Liz Truss, the new Prime Minister? Now, she was appointed by the Queen just on Tuesday. You know, just on Tuesday. And um, the pictures emerged of the Queen on her feet, shaking hands with uh, Liz Truss, which is quite remarkable at such an, a ripe old age. Well, Liz Truss uh, said the monarch was a rock on which modern Britain was built, uh, who had provided us, it is a word, it's called provided us with stability and the strength that we needed. All right, and of course, what is Prince uh, Charles, what is she saying about uh, King, the new King Charles? She said, quote, we offer him our loyalty and devotion, just as his mother devoted so much to so many 
for so long. Apart from her, the Archbishop, the Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, Justin Welby, who is quite known to Nigerians because he spent some time of his ministry in this country. Um, he's a spiritual leader of the Church of England, of which the monarch is supreme governor expressed his profound sadness. He said that his prayers are with the king and the royal family. Of course, um, I mean, Queen Elizabeth has spent a long time in a post-war austerity. The transition from uh, being an empire to the Commonwealth caused a lot of um, uh, nations lower the Union uh, jack and then, you know, uh, raise their own flags. This referring to their independence. And she saw that period and the transition from uh, most countries from being uh, 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 colonies of the British Empire to being independent countries. And that meant moving from the, an empire status to the Commonwealth. He also was around and saw the end of a Cold War, the UK's entry into the European Union, and the UK's withdrawal from the European Union, what we now know as Brexit. Um, she was queen over 15 prime ministers. And you've seen that picture there where she welcomed Liz Trust just two days ago. Well, she oversaw um, 15 prime ministers, starting with Winston Churchill, believe it or not, um, who was born in 1874, and also including Miss Truss, who was born 101 years later than Winston Churchill was born in 1975, quite, quite some time. She held weekly audiences with her prime minister, ministers throughout her reign, weekly audiences. Uh, with the Prime Minister throughout her reign. Now, at Buckingham Palace in London, we're told crowds awaiting updates on the Queen's condition began crying as they heard of her death. And, of course, the Union uh, flag on top of the palace was lowered to half-mast at 8.30 British Standard Time, and an official notice was announcing her death was posted outside. All right, and, uh, I mean, yesterday we had football matches involving two uh, British teams, uh, Arsenal Football Club uh, and Manchester United Football Clubs, both you know British football institutions, and um, in the Europa League, Europe, UEFA Europa League, and uh, uh, it was for for Arsenal. It was during their match that the announcement was made that the Queen officially was made that the Queen had passed um, at the ripe old age of 96, and at halftime, after uh, before the beginning of the second half, the Arsenal. Uh, players and the players of the opposing team, FC Zurich, had to gather around the centre circle for a brief moment of silence. And I'm sure this will hold memories uh, for the uh, Swiss fans who were hosting Arsenal Football Club, that uh, it was on the day that their team played Arsenal that the Queen passed in the marked it, you know, officially, the first official marking, a moment of silence was held at that ground in Zurich. All right or somewhere in St. Gallen, rather, in St. Gallen, in Switzerland. Also, uh, Manchester United, they had a, a brief moment of silence before they kicked off their game uh, with uh, Real Sociedad uh, in memory of the Queen. Um, we expect that the football matches for the English Premier League, and indeed the leagues in both England, Scotland, and Wales, and uh, maybe even Ireland, will be suspended over the weekend indeed including Northern Ireland, will be suspended over the weekend, you know, as they mourn the Queen. The British public have been instructed, you know, to stay at home today to mourn the Queen. And I'm sure this will last over the weekend. Um, if we go into uh, the history, the biography, the life and times uh, of uh, Queen Elizabeth, it will take a long time. But of course, um, some people, you know, uh, have been also expressing their uh, congratulations for uh, Prince Charles, that he's finally also been able to ascend uh, to the throne after waiting for quite some time, because he, of course, was born in 1948. But some have said that you know those expressing those views are being insensitive uh, to to the death or the situation, you know, at this time where Prince Charles himself will be in mourning and grief. Prince Queen Elizabeth has had a very close relationship for those of us in Africa uh, with the continent because she was in Africa uh, as princess when the death of her father, the then ailing king, uh, was announced. And she was in Kenya in 1952 when her father, the king, 
passed and then of course she had to run back, uh, you know, fly back to London to become the new queen. She was the new, the new queen, crowned at the young age of 27, you know, in 1953. Uh, she was the first monarch to be crowned and her, you know, um, the uh, the crowning was horse beam live on TV. That was the first time it ever happened in history before an estimated audience of 20 million people. So she created history, you know, in her lifetime. She'll be missed. And we say right here on Plus TV Africa, may her soul rest in peace. All right, moving on, uh, more trending stories right here uh, on the breakfast. Uh, Hush Poppy has been in the news a lot, but uh, not recently. We've not had a lot to talk about. It's mostly been about Abba Kerry, who is, uh, who is wanted by the United States government in relation to Hush Poppy's case. But Hush Poppy is back. And what we hear um, is that the United States government has granted his appeal and has reduced his sentence to 11 years. This is quite some news. You know, this is quite some news. He is an, an internet froster. Uh, he's facing trial in the United States of America. Uh, Ramon Abbas is his official name, but of course, for those who have been following him, him on Instagram, he's popularly known as Hush Puppy. So his jail term has been reduced to 11 years. Now, the reduction comes on the heels of his record, which uh, was revealed as part of his memorandum countering uh, centering, sentencing recommendations of prosecutors uh, showed he cleaned well and related well with other inmates. Now, he was claimed to be one of the best cleaners in the prison where he has been remanded since his arrest in 2021. Who would have thought that being a, a good cleaner in the prison could get your sentence reduced. I mean, then all of them there should be cleaning the hell out of that prison. Now, it was gathered that his report card for Central Valley Workshop for Prisoners showed that between July 2021, when he enrolled, and November 2021, he uh, completed work. Um, when he completed work, Hushopi put up very good uh, in attitude, quality of work, and dependability and productivity. Um, so Hushopi had appealed to United States Judge Otis Wright uh, for tempering of justice with Messi and a lighter jail term after scoring high in the cleaning activities. Now, the presiding judge uh, is scheduled to hear the sentencing arguments of the uh, prosecution and the defense of Hush Puppy on September 21 before delivering his judgment on the matter. So this is not yet uh, a foregone conclusion, but prosecutors in the United States have asked a, a federal judge uh, the federal judge, rather, to reduce the sentence uh, uh, to 11 years in prison and three years of supervised release. Um, I think all, this all, all goes to show that Hush Puppy is quite a clever man. And, uh, you know, he should not be underestimated. His cleverness and intelligence uh, should not be underestimated. Amazing. All right, let's uh, come back to Nigeria. And, of course, the 2023 elections are around the corner. Uh, the political scene is heating up. And uh, the political scene in Lagos is not being left out as the, um, <laughs> the Lagos State chapter of the All Progressives Congress. They have reacted to comments made by the gubernatorial candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Lagos State, uh, Olajide Adediro. And he's popularly called Jando. Now, he made some statements regarding the recent cases of building collapse in Lagos State. He had earlier this week called for the resignation of the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sanwolu, over the spate of building collapses in the state since 2019. And this, I, I, I didn't think we were going to hear anything from Jandor after he got the PDP ticket. And it's a relief, I would say, that we're actually hearing something from him because this democracy, you need to hear from the opposition as well. Now, this is what he said. Quote, it is not enough that a government official assigned to the ministry concerned, uh, the Commissioner for Fiscal Planning and Urban Development, uh, resigned. Governor Babajide Sanwolu has failed entire Lagosians, not only the victims of this current incident and the over 100 people who died in about 47 cases of building collapse between 2019 to date in the state. The governor's failure to ensure due diligence on the governor's or governance process by engagement uh, of Competent personnel established to carry out, you know, establish rather his culpability. It is expected that the governor himself should have resigned instead of the arranged scapegoating of 
asking his commissioner to quit. He has made many unfulfilled promises to prevent these disasters and the attendant avoidable debt. So this is a statement coming from Jando, the PDP governorship candidate uh, in Lagos State. And of course, the People's Democratic Party is a leading uh, opposition party, not just in Nigeria, but also in uh, Lagos State. And, um, you know, some persons, uh, some persons, uh, you know, feel that uh, most of those in the PDP and Lagos State are just um, uh, fronting uh, for the APC and the, the, the PDP in Lagos State is really virtually non-existent. Of course, uh, Jando uh, was a key member of the People's, the All Progressives Congress, you know, with his, his um, uh, Lagos for Lagos movement, canvassing and garnering lots of support for the APC, indeed for Samuolu uh, and President Buhari in the last election. And uh, not a few eyebrows were raised when he moved to the PDP. Uh, some people still feel that the PDP uh, uh, is just another arm of the APC in Lagos State. And that's why the party has been seen as a toothless bulldog over the years in Lagos State. So maybe Jando's statement and his, um, his uh, speaking up over the incessant or the recent rather uh, building collapses in Lagos State may go away to dispel that view um, of, uh, uh, of some person, of some persons indeed. Um, this is not something that Saolu would want to hear. Indeed, uh, Jando went on to say that the governor's failure to ensure uh, due diligence on the governance process by engagement of competent personnel established his culpability. Uh, he also said it is expected, quote, it is expected that the governor himself should have resigned uh, instead of the arranged scapegoating of his commissioner. Uh, he said his insensitivity and display of disregard for human lives by showing up at a social event in the faraway United States to present an award while the blood of the victims was still warm is condemnable. Of course, um, this is referring to the governor's visit to Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States of America to attend the Hedy's Awards. It's a musical award, the biggest uh, music awards in Nigeria, uh, this time holding in the United States, where Samolu did not just attend, but indeed tweeted about that event and put his pictures uh, on social media. Of course, Jando now saying that this is insensitive uh, by the governor. Now, the latest is that the Lagos State chapter of the All Progressives Congress responded. And they did this through the spokesman, Mr. Shaye Oladejo, who released a statement um, uh, a couple of days ago uh, describing the call made by Jando as, quote, <laughs> childish. Now, this is what he said, quote, the Lagos State government has not hesitated to investigate the cause of such incidents and wield the big stick where necessary. While there may still be a few bad eggs in the sector who continue to circumvent the system, we remain committed to its complete uh, sanitation. And he went on to say in the statement, quote, it is unacceptable devilish and uncivilized uh, for the PDP to celebrate the incident and dance on the grave of the victims in the name of politics. He said, quote, the Lagos State government remains resolutely committed to the protection of lives and property of all Lagosians. Lagosians will continue to do our best, utmost, as a regulatory body for all manner of construction while we all, as citizens, uh, have uh, a duty to comply with all rules and regulations. So, of course, um, this statement, you know, pushing the blame to the citizens and, of course, raising the issue of non-compliance to uh, building regulations as the result, or the cause, rather, of these uh, building collapses in Lagos State. Indeed, a lot of them have held. And Jando was, uh, he, he even gave, went to give a number, uh, 47 cases of building collapse between 2019 to date. So what he says, the governor himself should resign, not the commissioner uh, for urban development and fiscal planning. But what the APC in Lagos City is saying is that most of this is as a result of um, uh, non-adherence to building regulations by uh, the citizens, and uh, this is not the governor's fault. You know, so well the jury is out, of course, for those who believe that the governor uh, could do better. For those who believe that, well, this is out of the hands of the governor of Lagos State if people choose not to comply or if those who are meant to um, regulate the building in Lagos State, you know, the building sector in Lagos State do not do their job well. Um, I think, you know, uh, for most people when they heard that the commissioner had resigned, that was a novel in, in Nigerian politics because you do not hear uh, politicians or, you know, public office holders uh, resigning. It's rare. It's rare. So for the commissioner to have done that, that was uh, um, a, a, a bold one. It was not the usual. Now, is it is this is this big enough 
or is this, um, well, it's actually big enough because people, people have lost their lives, but is it, does it call for the governor himself to resign, uh, to step down? This is where <laughs> the debate is, you know, is this something that is um, enough for the governor to step down? That's where the debate is. Um, well, you're left to make your mind up as to what you believe, uh, but I think for me, personally, I think uh, it's quite refreshing to hear uh, the PDP in Lagos State speaking up and saying something, at least, <laughs> for a change. All right, that's our top trending segment. We'll take a break, and uh, when we come back, we'll dive straight into our new super analysis segment of the press. We call it right here on The Breakfast. Please stay with us.